topic for today is pediatric uh, electrocardiogram. So, uh, the goal of this topic, the objectives of this topic is to present the common indications for requesting a pediatric electrocardiogram or ECG to present the basic pediatric ECG interpretation. So these are the common indications for pediatric ECG. So we usually request for ECG for us to diagnose and manage the congenital heart disease, arrhythmia, rheumatic fever, Kawasaki, pericarditis, and myocarditis. We also request if the patient presents with syncope or if the patient also have uh, seizures, we call it the funny turns. And if the patient also have cyanotic episodes or if the patient have uh, chest pain or other uh, associated symptoms that are related to exertion. Uh, if the patient have a family history of sudden death or patient that died less than uh, 50 years old because of cardiac diseases and other life-threatening event. Or example, if the patient have a family history of uh, cardiac arrhythmias, no, we also request for ECG. We also request for ECG if there are electrolyte abnormalities and if there are drug ingestion. So these are the common indications. However, these are not the only indication. So some pediatrician, they also request no, for, the, for ECG if the patient also have difficulty of breathing or if there is also uh, COVID infection, no, they also ask for ECGs. Uh, so uh, these are the checklists. No? We, I, also, I usually check for this no before i read the ecg so the the most important part of this checklist is the age because as you know in pediatrics different age group have different normal heart rate and normal access and also i check for the indications no so that i will be i will know no what is the reason why the the attending physician requested for the ecg I also check for the speed and the standardization. So the, the normal is uh, 25 speed and the length is also should be more than five millimeter. And also these are the uh, values I got from the ECG. So these are the rate, the rhythm, the QRS axis, the durations and interval the hypertrophy and the ST wave changes. So these are, if you were able to see an ECG, you will all see this, no? We usually put numbers, no, in this uh, column. Okay, so these are the steps, no? So I have nine steps, no, in reading the ECG. So first is to ensure that there is a P wave before every QRX complex and that all the P waves are of the same shape and the P wave is upright except ABR. So in all leads, so we have long lead one, two, three, four, uh, long lead one, two, three, then ABR, ABF, AB, uh, ABL. We also have B1, B2 until B6, no? So uh, we need to see the P wave. This is the P wave. Uh, should be upright in all leads, no, except in ABR. So remember that you don't need to see an upright, uh, an upright, uh, an upright uh, P wave, no, in in ABR. So if you see an inverted P wave, it means in the ABR it is still sinus. So. Uh, you should see P wave before the QRS. So this is P wave, this is QRS, and this is T wave. So you need to see P wave before the QRS complex. So it means that if there is a P wave, the ECG is normal rhythm, or we call it the sinus rhythm. So it will 
you can automatically say that this is sinus, no? If you are able to see P wave. Okay, next. Next is determine whether the rhythm is regular or irregular. So you will know the rhythm, the regularity of the rhythm by checking your R wave. So this is, again, this is your P wave. This is your Q, R, S, and T wave. So you will see the regularity or the irregularity of the rhythm by checking the R wave. So this is the R wave. 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 So the R wave will be regular if the number of 0, 1 to 1 to 2 is the same. So we call it sinus rhythm. If the uh, number or the values of 0, 1 to, C, to 1 to 2 is more than 5, no more than 5 boxes or more than 10. Example, if the heart rate of this is 60 and the heart rate of this is 70, so we call it sinus arrhythmia. If the heart rate of this is 30, and the heart rate of this is 50, we call it sinus bradyarrhythmia. If the heart rate of this is 120, and the heart rate of this is 130, we call it sinus tachycardia. However, you need to know the age, no? because the 120 to 130 is still normal in a newborn, so you call it just sinus arrhythmia, not sinus tachycardia tachyarrhythmia but if the uh, if the age of the patient is 14 years old and if the patient have 120 to 130 interval of the heart rate we call it sinus tachyarrhythmia okay next uh, the rhythm is sinus again if the qrs complex is preceded by p wave and the p wave is upright in 1 and abf no, so uh, so these are the still normal, no, even though you see an upright P wave in the AVF. Next, ectopic rhythm. So these are uh, these are not required for you to know, but this is uh, good to know only. But I don't require you to know the rhythm of the A wave, no, of the P wave. I mean, next. So determination of the heart rate. So we have a reg, uh, rule of 300. So in adult, you can eyeball it, no? So we usually memorize this. So 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 30. So in, in, in adult, you just, you can eyeball it. Uh, how is it done? So you count this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11. So probably the, the heart rate of this is less than 30 because the squares is more than 10. If the square is example, I go back to my previous example, the heart rate of this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is 4 squares. So this is 4 squares. So the rough estimate of the heart rate is 75. That is only for adult because in adult, the, the common or the normal heart rate is 60 to 100. However, in pediatrics, different age group have different heart rate. That's why we compute, no? We compute for the heart rate. So these are the normal values, how we compute it. So there, there are two formulas, but I am usually uh, using this number two formula. So I count all the small squares and divided into 1,500. No, so what I usually do, I count this and I divide it into 1,500. I'll give examples later after the lecture. Okay, so you need to memorize no, the normal value. So for the newborn, it is 110 to 150. For two years old, it is 85 to 125. Four years, 75 to 110. More than six years, it is 60 to 100. Next, so this is an example no, uh, of an ECG. So this ECG, you will note that there is a P wave. So this is sinus 
read them. And you count for the square. So I'll compute no, for the heart rate of this ECG. So this ECG has, uh, this is, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26, 27, so 25. So 1,500 divided by 25. So the heart rate of this ECG is 60. So this is a 5-year-old, a uh, 10-year-old boy. No, So we call it sinus rhythm because the heart rate is 60 and there is a P wave. So the interpretation of this ECG is sinus rhythm and the heart rate is 60. Okay. Next, we determine the QRS axis. So the, the direction of the negative to positive electrode. So as you see in this diagram, uh, I usually draw a man no, standing with the arms wide open and the feet wide open. So I represent the arms as ABR and ABF. And the one that in the middle is the ABF. And this is one. And the two legs are long lead two and uh, lead three. So this is the, inter this is the representation of the, of the axis. So... 1 is 0, 2 is 60, 3 is 120, and ABF is 90. So uh, this one from, from ABF to 2, the value of that is 30. So remember that this that value of this one to this one is 30. No? So we will be using it later once we plot the axis. Next, so this is my example. So I'm going to plot no the this ECG. So a uh, long lead uh, the lead one is upright, lead two is upright, lead three is upright, ABR, ABL, and ABF is uh, ABR and ABL is negative no, and ABF is upright. However, the ABF and ABL are usually uh, normally negative. So what does it mean? So even though they are negative, they you will put the ABR and ABL instead of towards the arrow, you place it away from the arrow. So I'll just plot this no, so that you will understand it better. So, uh, okay. So your one is upright, so I place it towards the arrow. So I place it towards the arrow. Your two is also upright, I will place it towards the arrow. Your three is upright also, I will still place it towards the arrow. And your ABR is downward, but I said this is usually normally negative. So instead of placing here away from towards the arrow, I will place it away from the arrow. Your ABL is downward also. So instead of placing it towards the arrow, I will place it away from the arrow. And the EBF is upright, so I will place it here. So I'll combine these three. Okay, so I'll combine this three and divide it into two. So I divide this here. And remember, the value of this is 30. This is 30. So you, since I divide it into two, so the value of this will be 15. So I either add this 15 to, 5, to 60 or, I'm, uh, or subtract. 90 to 15. So the value of this is 75. No, so whatever you do, you add it into 60 or you uh, subtract it into 90. The value, the, the axis of this is 75. Okay, so if you have any question, uh, please ask later. So I'll Okay, next. So these are the normal values no, for the axis. Uh, so the normal, the normal value is uh, for one week to one month is, is more than 110. One, 
one to three months, it is 70 degrees. Three months to three years old, it is uh, 10 to 110. No? This is the mean normal. For older than three years old, is, it, it is 20 to 120. For adult, negative 30 to 110. So if the range is normal, we just put their normal axis for age. If the value example for one week old, and the value is 3, 100, uh, 190. So I usually place it right axis deviation. If the value is negative 180, I place it left axis deviation. So you just place the, the interpretation. Sorry. Okay, check for hypertrophy. So... Uh, for the hypertrophy, you just memorize no? how to interpret it. For right axis deviation, or I, so, sorry, right axis enlargement, uh, there is a peak P wave, which is more than 3 millimeter in 6 months old, and more than 2.5 millimeter in more than 6 months old. So right axis deviation, uh, the the, this is the P wave. If there is a, if the P wave is more than three millimeters, so that is the velocity. Uh, there is a right axis deviation, or if there is a, a two way, no, for the for the RAE, so that is uh, aside from the peak uh, T wave, there is a double, no, double. Uh, P wave, so that is right axis, right, right atrial en enlargement. Okay, for the left atrial enlargement, it is usually notch, widened, or bipasic. Uh, for uh, usually, you can see a P wave of more than 0 0.09 duration in long lead two. In long lead B one, you will see a late negative deflection, or we call it the rabbit ear. No, this is the rabbit ear, and this is by basic. So if there, if you were able to see this one, this is a combined uh, because of the rabbit ear. And for the notch, it is a left atrial enlargement. Okay, for the right ventricular hypertrophy, you don't need to memorize this. No, you just uh, have. I, I mean, you don't need to fulfill all of this, no? You don't also need to memorize this. You just need to know the more important uh, uh, category for you to say that this is right ventricular hypertrophy. So for RVH, we usually, uh, the mnemonics here is, if you can see R in B1 more than 20, this is right ventricular hypertrophy. And if you are able to see uh, S in B1, this is left ventricular hypertrophy. Okay, so this uh, you just uh, you just copy this and this one. Okay, so we also have a combined ventricular hypertrophy. So the phenomenon we call it the cat's wagtail. It means that the R and S in B1 to B4 is more than 60 millimeter. So a combination of right ventricular hypertrophy and left ventricular hypertrophy. So these are usually seen in patient with, uh, with uh, endocardial cushion defect, or we call it the combined atrioventricular septal defect that are usually seen in a uh, patient with Down syndrome. Next, the PR interval. So the normal value for the PR interval is 0 0.12 to 0 0.2. You don't need to memorize this, just memorize this two, 0 0.12 and 0 0.2. If the PR interval is more than 0.2, we call it uh, the a AB block. No, so what is first degree AB block? So there must be a P wave. There must be one P wave to each QRS complexes. P wave have morphology and axis usual for the subject. And the more important one is this one. The PR interval is prolonged. So usually it is more than 0.2 seconds. So this, are, this is the example. 
So you, you will notice that this is five, six, seven, eight. So this is eight, no, eight small square. So you multiply it to zero point four. So the value is zero point thirty two. So since the value of your PR interval is 0 0.32, so this is first degree AB block because the normal value for PR interval is 0 0.2. Next, second degree AB blocks or move its type one, we call it the Wenke block. So there is a there is a prolonged PR interval. However, uh, there is a progressive prolongation of the PR interval and there is a drop bit. So that is the difference between your first and second degree AB block. So for the second degree AB block type 1, or we call it the Wenke back phenomenon, uh, you will see here, here the, the PR interval here is 0 0.24, and this one is 0 0.28. Then there is a drop bit. No? So you will notice that the PR interval is prolonging. So... Uh, and the key here is the drop bit and the difference between type 1 and type 2 uh, move bits is in the move bits type 2 there is a fixed no pr interval so it means that the pr interval is not prolonging um not like in type 1 but there is also a drop bit so you will note that the PR interval here is the same with the PR interval here. However, there is a drop bit. So this is 0.28. This is also 0.28. And there is a drop bit. So that is the difference between type 1 and type 2 move bits. And the difference between uh, type 1 and type 2 AB block is there is a drop bit. Okay. Next, third degree AB block. So usually the key here is you will note that the heart rate is 15 to 70 bits per minute. And the shape of the QRS is usually constant and often there are abnormal and of uh, constant uh, morphology. And there is a lot of P wave no, in a one uh, cycle. So in this example, you will note that there is a P wave here. There is a P wave here. Sometimes from R to R, there are two P waves. No? And the heart rate is usually 40 to 50 minutes. Uh, uh, 50, 40 to 50 minutes. So usually there are bradycardic. No? So we call it the third degree AB block. And if we saw this no, in, in any person, adult or pediatrics we usually uh, place the patient uh, we we put a pacemaker no for this patient so because uh, heart block can can decrease the ejection fraction and can eventually cause the patient to have heart failure that's why we usually insert a pacemaker for this patient okay next you determine the q Q-T interval and the Q-T co computed. So the Q-T interval is from the end of the R or from the start of the R until the end of the T wave. So that is your Q-T interval. So the example here, your Q-T is from this point to this point. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is 10. You, you, you will... The 10 value is you multiply it to 0 0.4, 0 0.04, so the value is 0 0.4. So that is your QT interval. And we will compute no, for the QT corrected. So the formula for QT corrected is uh, QTA divided by the square root of R times 0 0.04. So the QTA is 0.4. And the RR, you, co you count, no, 5, 10, 15, 22. So 22 times 0 0.04, and you get the square root of that, uh, which is 0 0.9. 0 0.9 divided by uh, 0.4 divided by 0 0.9. So the value is 0 0.044. So 
the there are also different normal values no the the normal value should be less than 0 0.45 if more than that it is already prolonged no prolonged qt interval so um it is sorry it is age and heart dependent no so as i said more than 0.44 it is already abnormal and if the qtc is abnormal uh, this is usually secondary to congenital uh, prolonged QTC, uh, usually secondary to arrhythmias caused by the arith antiarrhythmic drugs such as quinidine, uh, procainamide, and amiodarone, and also electrolyte imbalance, which is uh, calcium. No, so you will have your a prolonged QTC if you have hypocalcemia and narrow if you have hypercalcemia. Okay, next is you look for the ST wave changes. No, you check for the ischemia, for the strain, and for the electrolyte abnormalities. For the for the Q wave, when the wave of the septal depolarization travels away from the recording electrode, the first deflection is usually negative. Uh, a small septal Q waves are often present in 1, ABL, B6, and B, uh, B5 and B6. So these are nor usually normal no, if you are able to see Q wave. However, more than three small squares, it is already abnormal. So non-pathological Q waves are less than two uh, small squares and it should be less than 25% of the R wave. So again, if more than three, it is already abnormal or more than 25% uh, of the R wave, it is already abnormal. It's either the patient have ischemia or the, uh, the patient have uh, ventricular hypertrophy, no, depending on the uh, lead where the where the Q wave is seen. Okay, next the T wave. Normally, it is upright until seven days of age. It is between one week and adolescent. Uh, it is negative, no, uh, and it becomes normal after adulthood and. Uh, the abnormal T waves, no, even though it is in eight, uh, seven days or in adolescent, if there is a wide QRS uh, angle, which is more than 100 degrees, which is uh, most common diagnosis of LVH, if there is a peak T wave, so probably this is hyperkalemia, or if there is a flattened or inverted T wave, this is hypokalemia. Okay. Uh, the T wave is all usually inverted no? in lead ABR and lead 2. T wave inversion in lead B1 is also common and T wave inversion in lead B2 is also, uh, 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 it's also normal no? if it is accompanied by uh, inversion in lead B1. So T wave inversion in two or more of the right precordial leads is also known as persistent zobenine pattern, which is common in peop in black people. Okay, U wave. Uh, this is secondary to the repolarization of the Perkin J fiber. There are usually uh, present, no, if the patient have hypokalemia. Uh, more than two millimeter, it is already abnormal. Abnormal, and usually you can see also U wave in patient using digoxin or quinidine for the conduction system or for uh, as antiarrhythmia. So ST wave uh, segment uh, elevation or depression is determined by measuring is one small square at the end of the QRS. So this is the J point, no? So this is the J point. If if the, I, I mean, this is the PR interval, no? If there, this is the J point. So if there is more than one, no? Uh, after the end of the Q wave, so it means there there is a downward displacement of the T wave. So that you can already say that uh, there is an elevation or depression of the T wave. 
So this is uh so this these are examples no of abnormal ST segment wherein it exceeds the two millimeter uh, elevation and uh, one millimeter depression in the ST segment. So this is injury subendocardial injury and this is subendocardial injury also. This is the ST wave segment elevation and this is st wave uh, segment uh, depression which is usually seen in patient with myocardial infarction or patient with pericarditis so rbb or the right bundle branch block so the rbb are usually have a r to r pattern or we call it the rabbit ear no if you have a uh, M pattern in the in B1, it is right bundle branch block. If you have a W pattern in uh, B6, it is left bundle branch block. Okay, so this is the example ECG. Uh, I'll discuss it later. So the principle, uh, the conclusion is. Uh, principles and interpretation of pediatric ECG are usually identical with the adult, no? but there are some variances, which is age-dependent, heart rate, and axis. However, the, the interpretation is almost the same. Um, 